Hello and welcome to Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson and once again I'm joined by... It's me, Bethany. <laughs> again. <laughs> For the last time, right? For the last time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, unless we decide to do an impulsive show next week. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, try to keep is... your emotions in check. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so emotional these days. <laughs> Uh, of course, this is a big week. Uh, Thursday, two days from today, is oh, Thanksgiving. You're looking yes, forward? Yes, and I know we talked about it last time, Joe. I yeah. know we did. I know we did, but I am so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is falling into place. The Berger family finally has their plans set in stone. We finally have an idea of what's going on, and I am so excited. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, the family's getting together on mm -hmm. Thursday. I have very little responsibility, which is nice. Uh, my contribution every year is to bring a couple of pies. Yeah. Uh, I try to get to my cousin's house uh, just before kickoff of the Lions game. Yes. And they have the largest charcuterie board I've ever seen in my life, mm -hmm. which isn't really a charcuterie board. It's just their kitchen table. But it's covered in crackers and cheese and oh, meats, yeah. and uh, that's what we munch on as we watch the Lions play in the afternoon and uh, wait for dinner to be served later on that evening. Yeah. What's your tradition looking like? Uh, well, for the past few years, especially with COVID and everything like that, it has been a little bit different, but we are finally going back to our roots. We are going back to Aunt Margie's house this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my great Aunt Margie, so that's on my dad's side, my dad's aunt. Um, all of us will kind of gather over at her place. Um, sometimes we prepare the things before, sometimes we don't, sometimes we cook it there. Um, she, it's really cool in her basement. She has a full kitchen. Mm. Like it's just there. It's just there. Um, but we usually do that. Um, what's your responsibility? What are you in charge of? I'm going to be honest, I don't think, like, <laughs> Bethany is in charge of anything <laughs> this year, but I know our group is responsible for stuffing and some of the other sides. Mm. Do you make the I stuffing think. from scratch, or do you go stovetop? Well, my mother's from Kentucky. Mm. Like, we're from Kentucky, so she's got that southern cooking down. I'm pretty sure she is making homemade stuffing. Mm. I would be a little surprised if she wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Um... Wouldn't be surprised if she brought like a pot of chicken and dumplings. Those are usually, that's like my sister's favorite. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I don't uh -huh. know, but I'm really excited. Um, also, I haven't had like an actual turkey in so long because usually like if it's just like me, my dad, my mom, and my sister, we have chicken. And like, don't know, chicken's good. Turkey. I'm so excited for turkey. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. And uh, I wore my cranberry today. Uh, yes. Cranberry, uh, the, the sauce that, you know, comes out of the can. Mm -hmm. The only time of the year I ever eat it and enjoy it is on Thanksgiving. That's one yeah. of those things I reserve exclusively for Thanksgiving. I'm with you there. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, we hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving this week. We're closed here at Owen TV Thursday and Friday. And then I'm on vacation next week, so I'm going to be gone for about 11 total days. Oh, wow, yeah. And uh, when I come back, not that I'm going away anywhere, but uh, believe it or that. not, Lake Orion uh, Lighted Christmas Parade is mm. a little over a week of, away. Yes. Uh, that was going to be my next question. You, do you feel the holiday uh, spirit just yet or uh, I am a strong believer in wait for Christmas until after Thanksgiving me too. I don't care if it's the day after I don't care that's fine that's fine yeah but let Thanksgiving have her moment let Thanksgiving be there first I again. agree but that being said I have started you know with the warmer weather that we've had recently a lot more people are putting up their lights and everything yeah they're taking so, advantage of it yeah yep so that's been nice um there's some of those Christmas commercials already coming on so we already <laughs> have you seen like, the John Travolta one I, I he's think uh I he's dressed as Santa Claus and he's walking down the street to uh staying alive and yes. uh, it's pretty awesome yeah. it's pretty cool to see him uh doing that again that's pretty neat Absolutely. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I've, I kind of uh, been forced into the Christmas spirit against mm -hmm. my will because I'm like you. 
I, uh, I like to start celebrating after Thanksgiving. I'll set up my tree uh, the weekend after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, but here in Lake Orion, things have gotten underway a little earlier. Yeah. Uh, something that happened uh, last week, Thursday, is the Orion Art Center kicked off their uh, holiday market. Mm -hmm. um, every year at this time, uh, over the next six weeks or so, uh, the Orient Arts Center will set up shop uh, at the Arts Center with handcrafted, unique, one-of-a-kind items mm -hmm. uh, that you can come in and uh, pick up as a stocking stuffer or a, uh, looking for a unique gift. I love that Michigan uh, tray there, Ooh. that ceramic tray. Yeah. Um, and so the proceeds not only benefit the artist, but a percentage of the proceeds goes to the Orient Arts Center. Uh, so they benefit from it so they can do their classes and appear at events uh, and stuff like that. So walking around you see a lot of really cool unique items and <clears throat> as, the, as the inventory dwindles mm -hmm. uh, the artist will replace it with uh, new stuff. So yeah. uh, if you get a chance swing by the Orient Arts Center uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, up through December 23rd uh, will be the last day. That's that's Christmas weekend, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so if you're looking for something unique, swing by the Orient Center. They got some really cool stuff there. I saw two sweet little girls that look like they're about four and six. I believe they are the director, uh, Holly Nicosia's daughters, and they had this little wire tree by the front entrance that had these necklaces hanging off of it. And they were so proud of the fact mm -hmm. that they had made these necklaces and that they were selling them uh, to help the Orient Art Center. So awesome. if, you, uh, if, you, so if you swing by to pick up those necklaces, tell them uh, Joe sent you <laughs> and uh, help out the Orient Art Center. So, uh, so that was really neat. That kind of got me a little bit in the Christmas spirit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the big thing that really kick, kicks off Christmas here in Lake Orion is uh, what they call now the Sing and Stroll, but it's the, okay. it's the downtown tree lighting ceremony. It's uh, sponsored by the DDA. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, um, ha, uh, Molly, who's the DDA director, her and I kept jokingly referring to downtown Lake Orion as a Hallmark movie. <laughs> and, uh, and that's kind of the feeling that yeah. you get when uh, you're in downtown Lake Orion for the tree lighting ceremony. So let's take a look uh, at uh, the tree lighting ceremony that I covered last week, Thursday. On Thursday, November 16th, Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion was transformed into a Hallmark movie as residents came out for the DDA Sing and Stroll tree lighting ceremony. Visitors enjoyed hot cocoa courtesy of cookies and cream and roasted marshmallows over a fire pit. Orion Township librarians read stories to children and the Lake Orion High School choir performed holiday carols. brought to you by the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority and its wonderful sponsors, Decorate with Lights, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, Pork and Pint, Cookies and Treen, um, Haney Farm Bureau, and your food dude. Thank you to those sponsors. At 6 p.m., families began singing Santa Claus is Coming to Town as the jolly one himself and his lovely wife made a dramatic entrance. Then Debbie Burgess of Builders Custom Flooring was invited to step into the gazebo to throw the switch to light up the Christmas tree. Three, two, one, Merry Christmas! that it is the kickoff of the holiday shopping season. It's time to um, make sure that our downtown looks like a Hallmark movie, you know, and that we are enjoying ourselves. I wanna remind everybody that shopping local makes a huge difference. It makes a difference in our community, not just for the, the shops that you shop, those business owners, 
that it helps the community because those shop owners invest here. They live here, they shop here too. So please shop local during your holidays. The DDA encourages you to take part in Shop Small Saturday on November 25th from 10 to 2 p.m. Look for the DDA table at the intersection of Flint and Broadway and pick up some free swag, a shopping guide, shopping passport, and enjoy some hot cocoa. For more information, visit downtownlakeorion.org. In downtown Lake Orion, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Hi, welcome back to Orion Outreach. I'm Bethany Berger once again, and then I am joined by... Uh, my name is Chelsea Petrusha with Orion Township Parks and Rec. Perfect. Now, I understand we have a lot of events coming up now that we're kind of like in the winter season. Mm -hmm. Um... So why don't we give some talks about those? Yeah. Uh, why don't we talk about those a bit? So I know that first up we have Cookies with Claws, which I'm sure everybody's looking forward to. Yeah, this is a new event for us. We've never okay. done anything like this before. Okay. Um, of course, Breakfast with the Grinch is something mm -hmm. we've done for many, many years, but Cookies with the Claws is brand new and it's filling really quickly. So I think there's a, a great draw to it. So that is, let me get my little sheet here. Yeah, it looks like it'll be December 8th. Yep, it's on December 8th from five to seven here at the Orient Center. Mm -hmm. um, there is a fee for this one of $14 for residents, 16 for non-residents, but um, it should be really fun and brand new events. So yeah, we're excited. So what are they gonna be doing? They're gonna come over, do mm -hmm. some cookies. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's kind of in the name, but. Yep, yep, so here at the Orient Center, if you've never been here before, we have those beautiful dining rooms. Mm -hmm. So it'll be located in there. They'll get to decorate cookies, which who doesn't love to do? And then oh, Santa yeah. Claus will come visit them. Yeah, um, as well. So it's a nice little intimate setting. If your child is a little bit more afraid of Santa, there's no big crowds. Mm -hmm. You have your set time, you know what you're doing, and um, there's no like, you know, anxiety as a parent yeah. with your kid and yeah. <laughs> making sure that they have a good time seeing For Santa. Sure. So. For sure. That's also, I know decorating cookies usually gets me into the Christmas mood. That's usually how You're I start right. off my Yeah, season. a little Christmas music. Yeah. yeah. Just doing that. That's always my favorite. And yeah. then you did mention Breakfast with the Grinch, and you yes. have been doing this for a while. So they should know what it is, but I, I don't. Yeah. So what is that? <laughs> Breakfast with the Grinch is one of our favorite events of the year. Mm -hmm. Again, it's here at the Orient Center, and you do have to pay to come, but same concept of getting like your set time, you come in, you know exactly what you're anticipating, um, you get breakfast, uh, your kids get to do a craft, and mm -hmm. then they get to go see the Grinch if they want to. Um, but no pressure if they're scared of the Grinch, <laughs> that's okay. We don't, yeah. you don't have to go take a picture with him, but you do get a family photo with the Grinch, mm -hmm. um, and Walgreens actually provides those photos for us, so. Awesome, yeah. that's great, this sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. Um, and it looks like you guys have green eggs and ham, which yep. we all it's know. all Dr. Seuss so. themed. <laughs> yes, and we definitely encourage kids to dress up and, mm -hmm. you know, like if you're a Grinch fan, you are a Grinch fan. If it's you're, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we get all sorts of different costumes mm -hmm. and it's just really fun. Our entire um, dining rooms get just transformed into like Whoville. That's awesome. So it's very fun. It's, I know it's cool. Yeah, the Grinch was always the movie that we would watch, usually on Christmas right. Eve. That was yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, it turned into Christmas Story once me and my sister got a little bit older. But the Grinch is yeah, we've already watched it once at my house. Oh, <laughs> I know we're we already... watched it. We watched it like months ago. Last I know, time was we're home, all we watched. Very it. excited for Christmas <laughs> this year. Yeah, yeah, very excited. <laughs> It'll definitely be fun. Then moving on to our next event. So that one's going to be on December 9th from 10 to 11:30 a.m. Or 11.30 to 12.30. Yeah. And then, so next it looks like on <clears> December 13th, we have Light Up Orion. Yes, Light Up Orion is something we started during COVID, actually. Okay. I don't know if many are aware of that, but we started that in 2020, and it's been successful ever since. Mm -hmm. So essentially, just if you like to decorate your house and you want the public to know that you have a house decorated, we just ask that you register with us through mm -hmm. our software and then uh, we create a nice map for the community to see where homes are in Orion that are lit up. And then we take pictures of each one or you take pictures of each one, mm -hmm. submit them in, and then we put them on Facebook and we have the public vote. And if you win, then you get a nice little prize awesome. for the most decorated house. Yeah, awesome. it's fun. 
that's always a very good event yeah, too. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. So registration is required for that one, but yes. I'm assuming that's like registering your house. Exactly. As everything. Um, submissions are due December 13th? Sure, yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. Alrighty, sounds perfect. And then we do have an email that you can send all of your images to there. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's going to be tcarpenter at oriontownship.org. Yeah. I know I'm looking forward to that. I love seeing all the houses decorated. I know. I feel like nice. this past weekend with the warm weather, everyone started to do it. Yeah. Like, I've seen a lot more yeah. lights up. Yeah. This but, weekend too, I feel like people... It's yeah. going to snow, I think, soon, so you want to get your... I'm expecting snow any... It's not even any day now anymore. I think it's more of, like, any hour. The coldness is like coming any in. Hour. I know, it rained today, I, and I was like, ooh. Yeah. It was raining today. I actually wore my coat. It was... Yeah. Winter I'm actually here. wearing covered shoes today. <laughs> no. People at ONTV know that I am constantly wearing sandals yes. and only sandals. It's, it's here. <laughs> it's time. I'm mm. not... A, I, mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next it looks like, which I, I'm pretty excited by the sound of this one. So Made in the Mitten pop-up market. Yes. So we have our Made in the Mitten that's always in October. Mm -hmm. And it's so popular that we've created one for December because then you can buy Christmas gifts. So Made okay. in the Mitten, it's a pop-up market. So not as large as the Made in the Mitten big craft show that we have mm -hmm. um, earlier in the fall. But this one will have many vendors all in our dining rooms not the entire facility okay so a uh, lots of different artisans um i mean there's a line out the door just to to get in to apply to be an artisan it's a very yeah well-liked craft show so. are there any names that people might recognize of people that are going to yeah, be there i mean or has registration you, started we try to make it very um diverse mm -hmm. so we you know you don't have all jewelry, all candle, all, yeah. you know, lotions and things like that. Of course. Um, but we do get some really unique ones that maybe you haven't ever seen at our big show. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. New stuff. All awesome. The time. So that'll be a fun. Mm -hmm. So it looks like, so that'll be here at the Orient Center on Wednesday, December 6th from 3 to 7. Yeah. And coming then, up. Coming yeah, up. Yeah, it's yep. coming up quick. Um, yeah. Yeah. Small, small artists. We need to shop local. Yeah, Support, shop local. You know. Yeah, that's the Saturday too. It's, so it's oh yeah, your right, mind yes. is already there. It's free to come in, of course. Free mm -hmm. parking, free admission, um, and it's just a nice little night away to go shop and yeah, see what people are making. It's Absolutely, cool. good atmosphere. Yes. So next on our long list here, we have the Snow Dash 5K. Yes. So hopefully we have snow by then. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> yes. by December seventeenth. I yes. would hope so. Yeah, I would hope so. So what does all of that entail? So snow dash is um, we do our regular like um, dragon dash in the spring. So mm -hmm. this one's in December, of course, and we hope that there's snow on the ground. But you uh, run the Pollyann Trail. Yes. Okay. So it's just beautiful. I mean, every year there it's just always just yeah. beautiful weather, and. Um, yeah, that's honestly, yeah, just <laughs> get to run to in the snow. for sure. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, this year is a little bit unique because they will be doing massages after. Oh, really? Yeah, so new, a new um, thing to do after. So. Yeah, that'll definitely be interesting. Yeah. That'll help all those muscles relax exactly. after that running. I don't think I can do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean... Do you, do you guys do this every season? Yes. Or is it? Okay. Snow Dash yeah. is annual too. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. All yep. right. Every year. I'm trying to think. I don't want to miss anything for that one. Yeah. You don't register. You register at runsignup.com. Okay. Which you can uh, you can get through our registration mm -hmm. um, if you go on to orionparks.com, but you can just go on to runsignup.com. You'll see it on there, and it's $15 a runner. Right. And we have lots of sponsors for this one, so we're very thankful for all the sponsors. Awesome. So that'll be on Sunday, December 17th at 9 a.m. Yes. is the race start time? Yes. All right. 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 Is this like a race race, or is this like a friendly, let's run together? No, it is timed, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Perfect. it's a good one. Mm -hmm. All right. Then it looks like we have a few more things here. So no, Star we're Lab. You are busy. This is a very busy I mean, Christmas season, but... Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah it keeps us on our toes. Yeah, For Star sure. Lab, we haven't yes. done in quite some time either. Mm -hmm. 
this one is exciting because it's a, I don't know if you're familiar, but it's a portable inflatable planetarium. Ooh, so, okay. So um, there is an age restriction. You do have to be seven years old or older. Mm -hmm. um, and the parent, of course, would register the child for it. But it's um, like this dome that the kids get to go into and see different stars and mm -hmm. educational, very fun. Yeah. Yeah. So that so one. So it's, it's inflatable? Yeah. I don't know how that works. I've never seen it okay. before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I think sense. it's just worth coming to check out, honestly. I was going to say, is like, would an adult such as I be able to go, or is that like a kid thing? Because um, like, I, think I don't want to be. I think it is more for the kids. <laughs> okay. But That's it is cool. Yeah, I know. I'll just, I agree. I'll just bring Maybe one we'll of my little adult cousins one. or something. <laughs> I'll bring one of my little cousins <laughs> under the guise of, yeah, because I think they're like four and six. Yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah, so it'll be fine. Two dollars. <laughs> we do require a two dollar, just a minimal fee because yeah, there is only so many spots, and we want to make sure that people are registering and are actually coming. So for sure, it's two dollars for residents, three dollars for non-residents, and that you can also um, do it online or come mm -hmm. in and register in person. All right, and then that one looks like it'll be December twenty eighth. So we are after Christmas now. Yes, but. It's Christmas. Yeah. It's Christmas. So yeah, Thursday, December 28th, 11 to noon or 12.30 to 1. Yes, we will have two time slots. <laughs> this is also a very popular event mm -hmm. um, throughout yeah. Oakland County. So make sure you register. Yes, for sure. And then I believe one of the last things that we have, one mm -hmm. of our last events, is the ho Holly Holiday Lunch. Yes. So this is for our 50 and over crowd okay. here at the Orient Center. This one we've been doing forever as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it is through um, our member. You have to be a member of the Orient Center, which is easy. It's free. Yeah. But if you've never come before, it's awesome. Um, we will have a really great meal provided to us by the OPC. They come and give us um, a great Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. And then there will be entertainment by the Big Band Orchestra. So. Awesome. Yeah, it'll be a really great event. That is actually, when is that, December 13th? Yep. Yep, Wednesday, like December it. 13th. You do have to pay. It's $6 for residents, 8 for non-residents, mm -hmm. but it's well worth. I mean, you get a great meal, and then you also get to listen to some live music after you eat. So Awesome. Lots of socialization. Well, that sounds like a good time. And then that was, uh, so the membership is required as well, but that's free, so mm -hmm. should yep. be pretty easy to do. And we have our older crowd yeah 15 over so if you're yes. not a member definitely it's easy to become a member Absolutely. and you won't regret it we do yeah. so much fun stuff yeah and i think that's for the retiring community so yeah yeah absolutely i think that's all the events that we have but i yeah. do know that you wanted to touch that the orion parks now has new software yeah so we are currently still in the onboarding stage mm -hmm. but starting next week we will be um promoting that you can create your new account within our new software. Um, it's called SmartRec, so you'll see that on our website, and we'll be submitting like QR codes that you can just go in and create your new account. Mm -hmm. Super easy. Uh, we're very excited for this new software because it's um, very user-friendly. Um, it's definitely, um, it was made for online registration. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to be moving more in the future of how people just like to shop online. A very easy, um, friendly way to register for all of our programs. So mm -hmm. um, we'll be definitely look out for the QR code and go on and just create a new account. So there'll be a little bit of a learning curve for sure. Yeah. For all of our new um, new software new learning curve. That's how it always is. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we're excited. It's going to yeah. be a good start to the year with new software for sure. That would yeah. be very nice. Yeah. Is there anything else that you wanted to touch on? or No, it's just no? exciting time of year for Parks and Rec. For sure. And we're very thankful for all of our community members who come and, and do all of our fun stuff that we plan. We work hard to put on some great events for you guys. So we hope it shows and we hope you guys enjoy it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. I know I've loved having you here. We've loved talking about these. I'm looking forward to a lot of these. I mean, I won't. Thank you. I won't be an intern anymore. <laughs> I know. Last one but, today. <laughs> but I'll be coming back for some of them. That's for sure. Perfect. So now it looks like so the North Oakland concert. Uh, band is coming up their next concert is going to be on sunday december 3rd at christ the redeemer church 
um, for their holiday concert. We're going to take a look back on last year's just so that way you can get excited for yeah, it. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. Nothing better than the concert band.
Well, that'll get you in the holiday spirit. So uh, that performance was from last year. Uh, as you said, mm -hmm. uh, their next performance is coming up on Sunday, December 3rd <clears throat> at Christ the Redeemer Church. So yes. if you want to get uh, you and uh, the family in the holiday spirit, go check out the North Oakland Concert Band. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier when you were talking to Chelsea, you know, I just yeah. sat here marveling at all the stuff they oh, have yeah. coming up, all the holiday events. Uh, yeah. You can't complain that there's nothing to do uh, over no. the next month or so. No. Uh, there's so much going on. Uh, I do have to admit, though, I, I got a little sad watching that segment because if you saw a recent issue of the Lake Orion Review, it's been officially announced that the township has purchased uh, the Great Lakes Athletic Club and will be moving their offices over to that building on Baldwin. And so I'm going to miss, because as you may or may not know, we share, currently share the Orient Center with the Parks and Rec and the Senior Center. And so whenever they would have one of those events that you and Chelsea talked about, I could just walk over <laughs> there. I didn't have to put on a coat. Don't even need to go outside. There's a <laughs> right. connecting door in the office. And uh, I would go over there and shoot video, and it was very yeah. convenient for me. Now I'm going to have to load up my camera, get in my car, and drive over there. And... Wow. I'm going to miss uh, having them here in the building. Yeah. We don't know officially yet who's going to end up occupying the space that they're going to be vacating, but uh, we hope they're neighborly. We hope they're friendly. Um, but yeah, I'm going to miss having those events right here in this, this building. For sure. So, For yeah. Sure. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Uh, as we said, one of the major mm -hmm. events that we're looking forward to is coming up a, a little over a week, the uh, Orion Lighted Parade. That's on Saturday the 2nd. Uh, the night before is the Holly Jolly Folly, mm -hmm. which takes place at the Galling Buick GMC car dealership on Lapeer Road. Yes. And that's something to see. The uh, who's who of Lake Orion show up. They have a couple hundred people come down for dinner mm -hmm. and music and uh, stuff like that. And uh, it's a fundraiser, one of the biggest fundraisers for the Orion Lighted Parade. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of fun to see that. And then the very next day is the Orion Lighted, Lighted Parade. Parade. And, you know, I've been in this community uh, 30 years. Uh, next month will be my 30th year mm -hmm. that I've uh, arrived here in Lake Orion. And when I first came out to this community, they still had a daytime parade really? uh, on the weekend. And I remember when I shot video of it, I noticed that it was not well attended and it was kind of small, not a huge crowd. And I was a little surprised by that. Mm -hmm. And so the organizers were like, we, we have to do something. We have to mix things up. So the very next year, which would have been Christmas 94, they went to the nighttime lighted parade and mm. it was a huge success. Yes. Lots of people turned out for it. And so they've been uh, doing it for a long time. So if my math is correct, that means next year just might be the 30th year of the nighttime Christmas parade. So, Should be. And it's just a great tradition. They say it's one of the biggest lighted parades, not just in the state, but possibly mm -hmm. in the country too. So recently we had uh, Bill Kokanis, who's on the uh, the parade committee yes. here in the studio to talk about the upcoming parade. So let's take a look at that interview now. Hi, welcome back to Orion Outreach. I'm Bethany Berger, and today I am joined by Bill Kokinas, who is the president of the Lake Orion Parade Group. Hi. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Good. So, tis the season. We're finally getting in there, you know, so everything's ended after Halloween, so automatically it's Christmas. Let's forget about Thanksgiving, right? So <laughs> and, and I do forget about Thanksgiving. <laughs> Being a part of the group, I would would not be shocked. I'm sure you've put a lot of planning into this. Um, but those days are finally coming up. So why don't we talk about those events? I know that we are starting December 1st. Um, we're going to be doing the Holly Jolly Folly. That is our main fundraiser. We do have a couple other fundraisers, um, which in September is a zombie walk mm -hmm. um, that uh, Ed's Broadway, Kathy and Lloyd Co. put on. That's a pretty good fundraiser for us. But the Holly Jolly Folly is our main fundraiser. It's sponsored by Galling Buick GMC. Um, 
and it's what I believe to be one of the largest attended events in North Oakland County mm -hmm. uh, as far as people wise go and uh, this year we're expecting well I should say expecting we have, we have over 400 people already signed up to attend awesome um, it's a dinner dance silent auction uh, with a with an open bar not open bar with a bar with beer and wine that are free Mm -hmm. uh, with your ticket prices and um, tickets are going fast so if people want them they got to get them now all right because uh, I'm thinking within a week or so we'll be pretty much shut down with that yeah. um, and we do believe uh, with whatever investigation we can do that we are the biggest lighted Christmas parade in the state of Michigan awesome. and that goes by numbers that mm -hmm. you know that's what we do we don't go by length of the parade or anything like that. we go by numbers of participants there are a couple other parades that are bigger attendance wise but they're also with concerts and mm -hmm. different things like that that draw more people yeah um, we don't after having the holly jolly on Friday night um, I really don't want to put a concert on in the middle of the afternoon yeah for sure but um, we get a great response we get between six to seven thousand people wow. um, at the parade this year's theme is Night at the Movies. Mm -hmm. uh, every every parade has a theme? Or? Every year we have a different theme. Um, it's getting tougher and tougher um, just because um, trying to come up with something unique and different. Mm -hmm. And this year we thought the movies because of uh, the fact is of that there are Christmas movies. I mean, you have Vacation and Christmas Vacation and mm -hmm. you know the other ones. So I mean, it's it's a it's a fun thing. It's a fun theme to have. Some groups don't do it. I mean, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing we ask the groups not to do is hand anything out, throw any candy or anything to the kids, mm -hmm. and we only want one Santa Claus in the parade. Yes. So um, we have that, and we have you know Santa Claus comes down from the North Pole with Mrs. Claus, <laughs> who Mrs. Claus will be out and about in the community helping promote the parade. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to keep it simple as we can. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. So that'll be Saturday, December 2nd. Um, and at what time did you say the parade It starts start? at 6 o'clock. Um, the Village Police Department, uh, Lake Orion PD, and the reserves start closing the roads down anywhere between noon and um, 3 o'clock. By 3 o'clock, the main roads in the village are pretty much shut down. Mm -hmm. um, and then they start closing the other roads off somewhere between 4 and 5. Um, there's plenty of parking downtown. People can park anywhere that they really want, as long as it's not an illegal parking. Um, and we will have two high school buses uh, driving, pe picking people up. Uh, if they park, um, say, down by Blanche Sims and they want to be in the village, the buses will pick them up, take them down to the village, and um, hopefully they'll be available to take them back. Our buses uh, move our costume characters, and we'll have over 40, over 40 costume characters mm -hmm. this year. Oh, wow. So yeah, let's hope for good weather, uh, Saturday, yeah. December 2nd, looking forward to it. Uh, Tessa, our director, and I will be out there recording it again this year and I uh, hope it's not too chilly. Uh, we've had years with miserable weather. I remember one year I had to wear a poncho because it was mm. raining and it was wet and cold and miserable. I believe um, it. I would rather have snow than rain. At least the snow looks nice. But yeah. I, At least it looks nice. At least you're not <laughs> totally soaked by the end of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe so, a little damp, but. Let's hope for nice weather and mm. uh, Come on out uh, Saturday. I think things start around six o'clock or so, and uh, it's that'll definitely get you in the holiday spirit with mm -hmm. the lighted floats and community groups and costume characters and all that stuff. So, really looking forward to that. Uh, speaking of downtown Lake Orion, uh, we have some exciting news to share. The, going back to uh, Election Day, uh, as you probably know, there was an effort. Uh, to defund the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority, who I believe is responsible for making the, the downtown area so vibrant and bustling. 
Um, but for some reason, there were people who wanted to see it go away, which I didn't quite understand. So mm -hmm. there was a, a, a issue on the ballot, the only issue on the ballot, uh, where voters were asked to whether or not they wanted to continue to fund the DDA. Mm -hmm. Now, the wording on the ballot was a little confusing because if you wanted to save the DDA, you voted no. If you wanted to see the DDA defunded, you voted yes, which was a little confusing. But, like Orion voters came out, uh, I think somewhere between seven and 800 voters came out. Uh, yes. the, the proposal failed by narrow margin, which means the DDA will continue. And so, you know, they had their tree lighting ceremony just recently and uh, they got more events planned. Uh, this Saturday is the shop local thing mm -hmm. in downtown Lake Orion uh, from 10 to 2, I think. You'll see the I DDA so. at the corner of Flint and Broadway. Uh, so I went to the DDA offices a week or so ago to give them an opportunity to uh, express their gratitude to Lake Orion voter voters. So let's take a look at that now. On Tuesday, voters in the village were encouraged to go to the polls to adopt or reject ordinance number 36.06, proposing a repeal of ordinance number 36.05, which has funded the DDA since 1985. When the polls closed that evening, the Oakland County Clerk's webpage revealed that 332 voters voted yes, while 444 voters voted no to repeal the ordinance, a difference of 112 votes, which means the DDA will continue to be funded through December 2039. a thousand voters actually for one issue that was a huge turnout <laughs> huge turnout um, and I am so glad that the voters have spoken and that the DDA is still valuable to the community um, I am so glad that the DDA board can now continue to make decisions that are for the benefit of the community and they can stop worrying about whether or not uh, you know something's going to happen to our funding. So I'm very happy about that. Um, and thank you, everybody who came out and voted. I know this was one issue, and normally, you know, whether you voted or not, it wouldn't necessarily be something you definitely do. So I appreciate everybody who came out and made a point of stating what their opinion was. Once the process began of placing the issue on the ballot, representatives of the DDA or Village Council were not allowed to persuade voters to vote one way or the other, so a committee was formed called Save the Lake Orion DDA. The committee began an informational campaign to educate residents on how the DDA is funded and how it serves the community. Social media played a huge role in that campaign. Part of the challenge is that the executive director of the DDA, Molly Lalone herself, and the DDA board, and even majority of the village council, just could not really speak on the issue. And we also understood that you know, the public, they hear the term DDA, maybe they even know that that stands for Downtown Development Authority, but a lot of people don't understand the difference even sometimes between that and maybe like what a Chamber of Commerce is. So level one was trying to explain that, but then also what was at stake here was the funding process, how the DDA gets funded. And that is a very, very, very complex issue. And thus, we knew it was going to take a pretty significant educational campaign to help inform the voters. Coincidentally, on the day we interviewed the director, the DDA officially took possession of Lake Orion Lumber, which means they can move forward with plans to turn the property into a community event space and add much needed parking to the downtown area. If you have any questions, you can reach out to the DDA by visiting their website at downtownlakeorion.org. You can also find them on Facebook. So congratulations to the folks at the DDA. They will continue to serve the community mm -hmm. for at least a decade or more. Uh, the next major project, as the, the story mentioned there at the end, uh, is that they have taken ownership of the Lake Orion Lumber Yard. The owner of the lumber yard is officially retired, at least mm -hmm. from that business and they're gonna start the development of that parcel of land. And I've seen the artist's renderings. Uh, there's gonna be a kind of uh, show places, gazebo, 
covered areas for like mm -hmm. maybe farmers markets and other community events and it's going to add much needed additional parking to for downtown sure. uh so really excited about what's coming in downtown lake orion it's it's really pretty exciting yeah. so yeah it'll be very very fun very exciting now after all this good news and uh, the holidays and thanksgiving and uh, the downtown and the parade and all that stuff I almost kind of hate to end on a somber note, um, but tomorrow is the 60th anniversary mm -hmm. of the assassination of JFK, and so there are new uh, documentaries that you can watch. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about those in a moment. Um, but a few years ago, uh, my family was digging through a box of uh, family heirlooms and scrapbooks and paperwork, and we found a manila envelope and uh, these were in the manila envelope that belonged to my grandmother, Frances Friday. And this is an original Detroit Free Press that came out the day after the assassination uh, that she felt she needed to save. So uh, she saved the actual paper. It's dated the 23rd, came out the next day. I'm sure there were special editions that came out that day. Mm -hmm. And digging in that envelope, we also found that she saved this issue, which uh, commemorates the assassination of Lee Harvey Oswald, who was killed like two days later after the mm -hmm. assassination. Um, now, like I said, there are numerous uh, documentaries, new documentaries that have come out. I've watched all of them because I can't get <laughs> enough of this. Um, one of them, it's a three-part series. Okay. It's on multiple streaming services. I watched it on Disney Plus. It's on Hulu. It's on a uh, number of streaming services. It's called JFK One Day in America. And like I said, there's three episodes. I just watched them all back to back to back. And it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. Every year when the anniversary rolls around, I watch whatever documentaries there. And I always learn something new. And the amazing thing about this particular documentary is, is that they used every bit of film and video that they could get their hands on. Uh, apparently it was uh, produced in part by the Dealey Plaza mm -hmm. Sixth Floor Museum, who I would imagine has their hands on all the archival film and video. Yeah. So I saw things I had never seen before and they kind of you know cover the day of the assassination, the aftermath, the Oswald killing. Um, and it was really amazing uh, to see footage that I had never seen before. So if you get a chance, check out One Day in America. There's also another documentary that I just watched the other day. It's called uh, What the Doctors Saw. And it focuses on the doctors at Parkland Hospital who received JFK on the day of the assassination. They tried mm -hmm. to save his life. And they give testimony, basically, um, that really kind of throw a wrench in the whole theory that, uh, that Oswald acted alone. Uh, mm -hmm. They say that when they saw Kennedy on the day of the assass assassination, the wounds that they saw look like entrance wounds, which means if those are entrance wounds, he couldn't have been shot from behind. So the shooter had to be in the grassy knoll, as they mm -hmm. call it, which was in front and to the right of the motorcade. So that really makes you question everything, that these professionals at Parkland who had saw their fair share of uh, shootings and stabbings and car accidents, uh, that they knew what they were looking at and then were contradicted later by the Warren Report and everything. So it really mm -hmm. kind of makes you think. And then a friend of mine insisted that I watch uh, a documentary that came out uh, two years ago in 2021. It's called JFK Revisited Through the Looking Glass. And uh, it's, it's partly produced by Oliver Stone, who did the JFK movie that came out in 1991. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the JFK movie because mm -hmm. Oliver Stone himself admitted that he was making an entertaining movie, not necessarily a documentary. So yeah. he kind of fudged some of the facts of the case. But the documentary just looks at facts and testimony and uh, talks about the, the who, the the how, and the why, mm -hmm. and it's really, really fascinating. And it really, again, makes you think, was there more than one assassin? It really yeah. kind of 
makes you think and want to do your own research. So, um, so those are some documentaries. If uh, if you're into the whole Dealey Plaza book depository thing, uh, check those out. Now, speaking of Dealey Plaza and the book depository, I was in Dallas just a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, it just so happened to work out that I was able to do this trip for the first time during the 60th year of the assassination. Um, my very first stop was the book depository. My Lyft driver dropped me off right in front of the entrance there. And uh, the sixth floor is now a museum. Mm -hmm. And so you buy a ticket, you ride an elevator up to the sixth floor. They have all kinds of artifacts and things like that. Uh, in the street, uh, just down from the book depository, I don't know if you can see it in that photo, but there's mm -hmm. an X in the pavement, which shows you where the fatal shot uh, hit Kennedy. And it, it's not as far as it seems. Everything felt really uh, compact and tight in Dealey Plaza. And yeah. the, the marker that you see there in the middle uh, says alleged uh, assassination by Lee Harvey Oswald. And I thought that mm. was interesting. I hear some shots inside the museum. The top left photo shows what they call the sniper's nest. Mm -hmm. There's a wall of boxes and, um, and then a stack of boxes where the shooter may have rested his rifle on yeah. the stack of boxes as he aimed out the window. A replica of the rifle is in the bottom left corner. Uh, the view from the book depository sixth floor, that's in the top right corner where you have a clear uh, look at the street below. Uh, below that is a computer simulation of how Dealey Plaza looked back when, uh, when the assassination took place. Yeah. In the middle bottom there are all the cameras that documented uh, the motorcade, uh, still photos, film, mm -hmm. uh, including what turned out to be a replica of the Abraham Zapruder uh, camera, which is now in the National Archives. Mm. Same thing with uh, Oswald's uh, actual gun is in the National yeah. Archives. One genuine artifact that you see in that slide is in the top middle is Lee Harvey Oswald's wedding ring. Yep. Uh, he took it off the night before the assassination and left it for his wife who he was uh, not really getting along with at the time. They lived in separate uh, residence. Mm -hmm. um, one of my goals when uh, I planned my trip is I wanted to stand where Abraham Zapruder stood when he filmed the assassination. So mm -hmm. in the bottom corner, there's me with uh, my replica camera that uh, Zapruder used yeah. and he captured the assassination from beginning to end. Uh, and that would have been his viewpoint uh, on the top right corner. But mm -hmm. uh, he provided the evidence that people look at when examining what happened in Dealey Plaza that day. And on the left there, there was just a high vantage point of Dealey Plaza. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mentioned earlier the grassy knoll and maybe a second shooter. These are shots that I took of the grassy knoll. Uh, you see in the top left photo is an image from the Knicks film which showed the grassy knoll area behind the limousine there. I tried to replicate that in the bottom left image. Mm -hmm. uh, top right is the fence area where a lot of people claim they saw a puff of smoke, a muzzle flash. Uh, so I went behind the fence to kind of see what the vantage point looked like. And sure enough, if someone wanted to do something like that, that yeah. was a, a, a pretty good vantage point. Uh, that would have seen the motorcade coming at them. So it's kind of interesting to, to visit the grassy knoll that you've heard so much about. For sure. So are there any more? Uh, oh yeah, so I went over to the uh, Dallas, what well, used to be the Dallas uh, City Jail, and I wasn't able to get inside it because it's a law school right now. Um, but that's where Lee Harvey Oswald was shot. Uh, just a couple of days after the JFK assassination. Mm -hmm. uh, ironically, the, uh, the armored car that was in the drive there uh, was blocking the ambulance that tried to get in there to whisk away Lee Harvey Oswald. So they yeah. had to move the armored car, get the ambulance in there, and uh, took Oswald to the very same hospital that JFK died at, mm -hmm. uh, where Oswald died from the gunshot wound. So that was a little bit of history there. Uh, I visited the Texas theater where uh, Oswald was arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, supposedly he went back to his rooming house, grabbed his pistol and a jacket. Uh, as he was looking to possibly board a bus, uh, he was spotted by some people who thought he looked suspicious. 
and he ducked into the uh, Texas theater there, and that's where he was arrested and taken to the city jail. And uh, this is the rooming house where uh, Oswald was staying for about seven weeks prior to the assassination. Mm -hmm. uh, the woman in the top middle photo, uh, Pat uh, Patricia Hall, uh, she was 11 years old when the assassination happened. She knew Oswald personally. Mm -hmm. uh, he helped her with her homework. He broke up fights uh, between her brothers, and uh, she's absolutely convinced that he is innocent just mm. based on uh, what she knew about him. And uh, the place has not changed all that much. And then we have uh, the Ruth Payne house where Oswald's wife and children lived with Ruth Payne. And supposedly, uh, the night before the assassination, Lee stopped by and grabbed his rifle, which was kept in the garage. And in the bottom right corner is a shot I took of the garage and a blanket that, uh, that uh, similar to the one that he'd used to kind of hide his rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's on the uh, Register of Historic Places. It's very similar to what it looked like back in 1963. So it was an amazing uh, history lesson. Yeah, and It was sure. really uh, something to see. Uh, we're just about out of time, but before we go, we want to give you a little look at some things that are happening in the community over the next week or so. So let's mm -hmm. go to Quick Hits. The Orient Library will be hosting Teen Tuesday tonight from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Teen Tuesday is a casual hangout for teens who enjoy anything from video games, board games, art games, D&D, crafts, and more. Snacks will be provided and new faces are always welcome. The Oakland County Parks will be offering free park entry on Thanksgiving Day. Visitors can enjoy free daily park entry with access to trails, dog parks, playgrounds, and fishing spots. Well, get your tickets today for the Holly Jolly Folly. This fundraising event takes place on Friday, December 1st at Gowling GMC in Lake Orion. Enjoy food, music, a silent auction, and lots of holiday cheer at this annual fundraiser for the Orion Lighted Christmas Parade. Get your tickets today at orionlightedparade.com. Well, the Orient Lighted Christmas Parade is right around the corner. Register your vote by November 30th at orientlightedparade.com. The parade takes place on Saturday, December 2nd, beginning at 6 p.m. in downtown Lake Orient. Registration is now open for the Breakfast with the Grinch. The breakfast will take place on Saturday, December 9th at the Orient Center. Spots are limited, so register today at orientparks.com. Well, it looks like we have a dry but chilly week ahead of us. Wednesday's forecast is calling for morning clouds with a high 41 and low 32. Partly cloudy on Thursday with a high 46 and low 25. Mostly cloudy on Friday with a high 37 and low 25. Mostly cloudy again on Saturday with a high 36 and low 25. And partly cloudy on Sunday with a high 39 and low 27. ONTV would like to wish everyone a safe and happy Thanksgiving Day weekend. Well, that's it for this week's ONTV Quick It. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Becky, and that'll pretty much do it for today's Orient Today. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving. And, uh, good luck in your future endeavors as you pursue pursue your career in uh, broadcasting. Yeah. And uh, we'll miss you. I'll miss it here. I'll miss <laughs> it here. It was a lot of fun to be here for the past few months. I've really enjoyed it. Awesome. Thanks for all your help. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for watching. Have a great Thanksgiving. And uh, we have one more episode uh, in a couple of weeks before we kind of wrap up for the year. So we'll see you in two weeks.